guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab. My name is Yvonne, and here on the channel, I love to take secondhand finds, thrift store finds, and make them over and share the process with you all of due to these items to give them new life. So in today's video, oh my goodness, do I have a trash or treasure for you. <sighs> Sometimes you have to see beyond the paint, somebody else's paint job. Taste is personal, <laughs> but this rolling cart island is extra space. It's extra craft room space. It's extra kitchen space. It's extra dining room space. So when I saw this rolling cart and the size of it, it was large. So I noticed all that before I noticed the spray paint, chalk paint, purple fuchsia color that it was and that it was not quite a wonderful paint job. I was gonna have my work cut out for me because I knew with all the pieces and parts of this, I was going to have to do a lot of sanding. So you have to decide, are you going to tackle it or are you going to leave it behind? And since I bought it at an auction and I won the bid, I guess that means I'm going to tackle it. I have no idea the age of the piece. I would say it's a bit newer because it has these wicker baskets and I cannot change the wicker baskets out. Um, I mean, I guess there's a way you could some whatever, <laughs> but I'm not going to. I'm going to. They slide in and out. They work perfectly. I don't really appreciate the paint job that's on those either, but the age of the wood on the top has me confused. It's not perfect. I'm not going to make it perfect. I love that perfectly imperfect. It does need some help. It needs to be cleaned up. But yeah, it just, it's funny because the age of the top doesn't necessarily match what I'm seeing on the rest of the piece. It would be really hard to find the exact same baskets that would fit into those guides. I guess you could just get a wire basket that may or may not work. Um, that may stay in the slats, but the slats are so wide apart, you can't guarantee that it would stay. It really needs to go into those glides. And then whatever paint was used or the paint was still wet, I, I don't know. Um, there's paint on the other side of it. The baskets are not completely, they're sprayed, but they're not completely sprayed. The inside has not been sprayed. Um, there is a little bit of brokenness here and there, but no, nothing terrible that cannot make them usable. And after lifting it up and getting it onto the table, I can see that the underneath was not painted. That, I mean, unless you have a workspace, I know it is not easy to always do, but I need to go ahead and remove the wheels because the wheels too have been painted. So I'm hoping that I do not have to replace wheels because that is not a cost <laughs> that I want to spend. But of course, it would be just simple to be able to take the drill to do, remove them, but nope, I, they needed to be screwed out by hand. So I saw on the inside two screws that are probably holding these towel racks in there. So not an easy position to get into or to see where the screws are even after removing the screws and then tapping it with a rubber mallet. They're on there. They're not they're not going anywhere. So I'm just going to have to deal with them as is. So I'm not sure if there's two different paint colors on here. I, I, I don't know. I, I can see a lighter purplish fuchsia underneath, but I do know that it was left shiny, so it's not really, I mean, it's actually sanding off really easy. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a lot of sanding to do. There's some beautiful detail on this piece. Slats aren't extremely fun <laughs> to sand. There's a lot of angles that are not going to be fun to sand, but at least the positive is that it's sanding off really easy.
sometimes it's easy to climb up on a step stool and just work in the position it is. This is actually, it's not terribly heavy, awkward, but not terribly heavy. So I just chose to do it this way. And I'm going to try as much as I can to get rid of the paint and the stain. Maybe this was a natural piece to begin with. Um, as much as I can with a power sander. <laughs> and then there will be some that I'll have to do hand sanding, but I want, since this is half painted, half stained, I'm gonna go ahead and get that removed also. But I'll switch over to my mouse sander, hoping to get in between the slats. Some of it will work, some of it won't work. Like I said, I wanna to try to do as much with the power sander as I can. I just love these little square details that have been carved in there, though they're filled with the paint too. So I'm just gonna take the scraping tool and try to see how much of it I can get scraped out. Now the hard thing about it is since it's not a smooth surface, that paint really wanted to get in there and stick. But I'll, I'll just scrape at it a little bit, see how much I get out. So now I need to deal with the top. So it, it is cracked. And I'm like, okay, so maybe I can tap it together. I'm trying to see if I can get any movements. There was no screws whatsoever holding this on. I think it's just glued in place. So I'm not sure why it cracked. Um, wet wood when it was attached, maybe. I'm not sure. So the the cracks are saying I'm not I'm not filling them in. This there is just going to be that perfectly perfect that age piece, but. It does have some top coat on it. It has some paint spillage on it. It has the burn mark on it. So I'm going to try to keep the integrity of some of the scratches, but I do want to clean it up a bit, especially if somebody would like to use this in their kitchen. I think they'd like it to be cleaned up a little bit more. So I'm using 220 sandpaper. So the higher the grit, the less material it will take off. So if I used 80 grit, I would really be digging into that wood, really getting those surface scratches off. But since it's cracked, you kind of want to keep the integrity of some of those, those scratches. Some of the color discoloration in the scratches would actually be really pretty. But I just want to get that top coat, the paint that has been spilled on here, and then the, some of the burn mark. I, I'm not sure how deep the burn mark is into the wood, but we'll find out. Did I get all the paint? No. Did I get a humongous portion of the paint? Yes. <laughs> so now I'm just blowing it off with the air compressor, removing that sanding dust. Okay, back on the table it goes. And <laughs> this is, oh, if you flip furniture and you're always by yourself, a lot of times like I am, I'm happy when I, Chris is there and I have help, but the struggles are real, but somehow we make it work. I don't know how we all do it, but we make it work. Now, before I start washing on this piece, I am going to tape off the rod part of this. I thought that would be a nice accent of the wood. Did I get it all completely sanded down? No. Remember, I'm trying to match the integrity of the top. So for these to be sparkling, brand new looking dowels, wouldn't really match. So a little bit of the top coat and the patina left on there will match up perfectly. But I don't want to take a chance on this raw wood accidentally spilling any of the paint on it. So I'm going to go ahead and spend the time to tape it off. And then I'm just going to clean the piece up just using some Dawn dish soap, some hot water. It's just a perfect way to wash up and prep your surface.
And I think I'm going to paint this the old timey green color. I kind of have come up with a mixture of milk paint that makes that old timey green. So I start off with two scoops of basil, one scoop of pantry door, and one scoop of in the pickle. I mix the three together. Then you mix that with equal parts, how many scoops you used, equal parts water, give or take a little bit, whatever consistency you are comfortable working with. But once you mix it, you need to mix it for two minutes. It will really aerate. You'll get some wonderful bubbling and then sit it off the side for two to ten minutes, whatever you feel like that it will thicken up. Now, because this piece has so many angles, and the wood is raw. I'm not going to prime it with anything. I don't feel like I'm going to have a problem with any of the leftover purple paint by like having shellac it or anything. I am going to spray it a little bit with water and that'll help me apply the paint just because the wood is so raw. So just a mister bottle as I'm painting will help here and there when I feel like it's really grabbing. But I am going to paint the bottom. There's, it's kind of a mess. I want to make sure that I get it all cleaned up. Um, there was something that was spilled through one of the slats or the cracks on the top, so I want to cover that up. But now this isn't a fun part to watch by any means because you can't really see what I'm doing because there's so many little details of this piece that you have to get into. And this long handle brush is really coming in handy <laughs> because there's places that your hand just plain and simply cannot fit. And if I would have thought I could figure out, I don't know how to put Sweet Pickens milk paint in a sprayer. This, this would have been a piece with all the slats. It would have been nice to be able to figure out spraying. So if you know how to put milk paint in a sprayer, please comment the directions below. Because there are surely areas I feel like I was going in blind. <laughs> like I'm using my camera really as my guide. You're getting to see this because I needed to see where that paintbrush was going. And I know that the undersides is not something that you're normally always going to see. But it just makes me feel better knowing that it is all cleaned up. So I won't torture you with the second coat, but yes, <laughs> not only did I have to do one coat with all those slats, now I gotta do a second coat. Yep, it's of course the first coat's not enough, but it, it will be well worth it. Look at that beautiful green. I love that vintage green. I wasn't too concerned about the top because I know I can re-sand that and some of the purple was underneath that little edge area I thought you know I, I'm not going to tape that off because I can re-sand that off it'll come off really easy but I did grab my heat gun I was curious to see if I would have any crack crackling 
crazing or chippiness going on, but the wood is so raw, I feel like it just soaked the paint right in, but it does help dry it. Okay, two coats are done, two coats are dry, time to sand it to smooth it. And I am going to distress the piece. That'll really tie in the weathered top with the handles and all that. Oh my gosh, isn't it just not gorgeous? And I really wish there was feel of vision because sanding with a 220 sandpaper, milk, sweet milk, pickens milk paint, oh, I couldn't get that out. <laughs> oh, it is so smooth, it sands so nice and smooth it's just amazing and I wanted to draw attention to those little squares so I'm going to sand and distress those a little bit more done sanding I blew it off again with the air compressor to get any of that sanding dust now I'm going to oh, add some of the color fusions black wax oh my gosh this is just going to just take this paint and really give it that vintage vibe look at the color change that happens once you seal it in it's just amazing and of course i'm hoping that some of the black wax will stick to some of that natural wood that's peeking in underneath i love how it's sticking in those little squares so it's a wax on wipe it on and then i'll go back through and wipe off the excess now i need to sand off that built up paint from where it was being pulled in and out i'll go ahead and scuff sand anything that i think looks a little bit on the chunky side but now we got to decide how we're finishing these up okay so i have the body done <laughs> what am i going to do with these baskets well i'm going to spray them I'm, they're already sprayed i'm going to spray them some more but the thing when you go to spray baskets is you have to go in multiple directions if you're trying to completely cover the basket you need to go in opposite directions. I hope that makes sense. Just going in one direction is not going to get your basket, the weaving to be completely covered. Now that I got the inside, I'm going to flip them over and start doing like some more of the outside, the bottom of it. Like I said, you just kind of have to let it dry and then see what other areas are showing. You flip it this way, flip it that way, flip it on their sides until you feel like you have it completely covered. The same way I cleaned the piece, I'm going to go ahead and clean, hopefully clean, I think it will, um, Dawn dish soap, hot water. I'm going to let it soak for an hour or so. And since these are metal, spray paint's not going to, and it's not a very good paint job, <laughs> spray paint isn't necessarily going to absorb into the metal. So just heating the metal up, they should it should easily become clean.
So my final step is to recondition that wood, and I'm just going to use some of the Sweet Pickens hemp oil for that. Like I said, I was not trying to make this top perfect. I was trying to keep the integrity of the older piece, and this will give that wood some protection. It'll give that wood a nice drink <laughs> that it desperately needs. And look at, I mean, just leaving some of the cut marks and the dark marks. Oh, it's just that perfectly imperfect that I just absolutely love. So if I would have tried to sand all those out, it would just really have made you notice those cracks more. It is what it is. Sometimes you just have to keep that piece the way that it is. So with the hemp oil, you put it on, you put a generous amount on, you can see areas where it's really soaking it in, and then you just let it sit for 20 minutes and then come back and wipe off the excess. And I'm going to do that same hemp oil on those dowel rods to the hangers and it just will really just bring this all together. And then when I, where I sanded it down and distressed the piece is the same color. So thank you so much for watching today's video and would you have tackled it? So yes, it was not an easy job sanding everything. It wasn't an easy job painting. It wasn't an easy job waxing. <laughs> it is what it is. It is a beautiful piece. So I just love that old timey color creating what happens when you mix all those different powder of milk paint together. It's just one of my go-to colors now and I just can't get enough of it and it sells really well and I can add it into my, I have added it into my own home decor. So give me a quick comment down below where would, would you have just stayed clear because you saw that fuchsia paint and like, no, I'm not tackling that. Or would you have tackled the job yourself because it is just a beautiful extra piece of serving. I mean, it's just some place to sit stuff on. It's just nice to have that kind of a, extra space if you don't have all those countertops or an island going on in your own home. So again, thanks for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you stayed to the end of the video, that means you liked it. So smash that subscription button along with the notification bell. So you know, we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys. And you can see what we're up to. Bye.